Welcome to episode 29 of Created by Design. Today, this whole video is going to be about the uh, Knitted Wild Animal Friends by Lois Crowweather and specifically about one of her new little characters, this little tiger, uh, that I've changed up a bit. Don't have her named yet, but she has quite a little story to her. And so I'm gonna share, um, Oh my goodness, all the things that we did to uh, come up with this, which I think turned out pretty cute, little, nice little tiger. And uh, I had a friend that, uh, I have a friend, I should say, that is a coach for a lacrosse team. And she actually has been uh, invited and is the coach of the Uganda women's lacrosse team and they've been invited to the world cup first time ever that um uganda would have a women's team at the lacrosse games playing in the lacrosse games i don't know much about it but um they're very thrilled and excited uh to get to go it's a it's a big deal for uganda and so my friend had been after me for making her a little uh tiger and she specifically wanted a white tiger well the pattern book uh only calls for a yellow gray and some white in um lois's design and so i had to get creative because my friend wanted a white tiger i was concerned about just doing her in white only because i thought well maybe you know, a lot of her features would be lost if she was 100% white. And I was looking at some pictures and noticed that most of the white tigers have uh, often a really soft gray stripe. Well, this is the lightest gray I could find in the yarns that I work with, which this yarn here is the Sheep G's. And um, so this is the lightest gray I could find and so I went ahead and made it. She, she says the colors are acceptable. Uh, so that's good. What I did up here in the, in the head is I took one strand of a gray. Uh, I, uh, you know, it was a three strand yarn and I took one of the strands out and I mixed it with the white uh, sheep G's and just knitted with it double and it just gave a little blending up here where on the face so the face wasn't completely white and uh, which I think helps give the face a little more definition by by doing that and I did it back here on the head also uh, but other than that uh, changing up the colors oh the pattern sh shows for white pads on the on the hand um, for the paws, uh, I did that gray. So I kind of reversed what uh, the pattern calls for. So the pattern's working with three colors. I basically changed it so I was working with two colors and that's that's where the challenge came in to still try to you know get some features in, in the face. So the next thing that uh, my friend thought that would be so cool is if she had this tiger in time to take with her to go to the games. And uh, uh, <laughs> so that meant hurry up and knit real, real fast. And so Tuesday of this week, which is just a couple of days away, uh, she'll be taking this tiger with her. And uh, hopefully we will see some pictures of this tiger in Uganda. I'm thrilled to think of the possibilities of that happening. Um, my friend is one of the coaches and her number is 22. So that's why we have 22 on, on the chest. And uh, there was not a pattern in the pattern book for a tank top. Uh, nor this uh, straight skirt. So I had to improvise, which um, if you've knitted very much and you understand gauge, um, you can kind of do that. But what I didn't have is I didn't have in the Sheep G's yarn uh, a red. 
and I did have a black, but I did not have a red that would work. So snooping through my stash of yarns, um, I, I discovered I had these colors in wool and the yellow is, is exactly the way the team color uh, shirt is. So I, I have a picture of the team uh, uniform and so I've duplicated it as close as I possibly can. Their shirt says Uganda across the front also, but I just didn't have room to get that in here. Um, so all of her clothing and her shoes are made of Jameson and Smith and Jameson Shetland yarn. Um, and I would never suggest doing that for a young child if it was going to be, you know, clothing that was going to be for, uh, if this was a play toy. But because this is really more of an adult um, uh, adventure, I felt comfortable in, in doing the clothing in, in the wool. So that let me, uh, you know, get the colors that I needed. But all along, uh, I really had to take the inches around the waist and do my gauge count. And I knew then how many inches I needed or stitches to cast on to give me the width around the, the body of the lion. I'll put back here a little bit so maybe you can see more of her at one time. So I did the skirt. She's got uh, a button up here, two buttons up here at the top, room for the tail. So that was pretty easy to figure out. If you've made many of these little critters, you can start kind of, you know, putting some of the techniques together. But I have to tell you, I knitted this tank top, uh, t half of it twice. I knitted it all up and the top was just way too big. You know, our little critters, their shoulders are narrow, much narrower than their waistline. And so I had it all done. My sister helped even put the yellow trim on it. And I just wasn't happy. So last night, I got my scissors out and I cut it all apart down to where the uh, red uh, ends off and I re-knitted this whole top and did a lot more uh, decreases to make this top fit. But in order for that to happen, I had to put um, buttons on the back of it like most of the other clothing is in order to get it either over her hips or over her head and with making an opening here in the back with a couple of buttons uh, it works just fine and then to get the yellow trim that was the next piece that was kind of uh, how am I going to do that because I was you know decreasing and and all experimental and I did not feel confident in trying to knit a yellow trim as I was knitting the, the tank top. So I went back afterwards with a crochet hook and the yellow yarn and I uh, pulled a loop through, put stitches on a needle uh, of the yellow and then I did a bind off right away or a cast off, whichever you want to call it. And so that gave me the yellow trim and I have to say I'm pleased with that. It's nice and tight. We tried several other things. We tried, um, you know, doing a cast over stitch, uh, which worked pretty good, but it was hard to get it uh, narrow enough. So it didn't quite look like it was in proportion to everything else. So I think ultimately what I ended up doing here really turned out good. And I'll do a close up and try to hold it still so you can see. Then to get the 22, you know, this is knitting. That was hard to get that to look exactly like. So the twos aren't exactly 100% the same, but that's okay. Uh, we're going to live with that. And uh, so I knitted a crocheted chain and uh, two chains uh, did the same amount of stitches in each one but you know knitting uh, you don't always get consistently um, the same size stitches but so they're not 100% perfect but I think they're just dandy um, what else can I tell you about this top I blocked it um, all of that worked really well I'm very pleased how the skirt looks believe it or not they play in a skirt. They have a 
choice of shorts or skirt and um, the team chose to play in skirt. Honestly, I've never seen a lacrosse game. I can't imagine. Um, I, I haven't made little tights for her yet, so her bottom's kind of bare. So I'm hoping yet this evening that I'll get a little pair of um, knickers, but I don't want them to be, you know, bulky. So we'll see if I get that done yet this evening. But that's my story about the clothing. So even the shoes are done in the Jameson and Smith, and I think they turned out just really great. So let me tell you a little bit more about my adventure with with knitting this little tiger. You know, uh, if you've been following my videos, uh, you know I don't do them like uh, the pattern calls for. Uh, Lois, totally, the head is separate, uh, closed off, uh, you know, at the bottom, and the shoulder here at the neck is closed, and then you sew the two together. Well, I've never cared for that. Love everything else about her patterns. They're terrific. But I never could get mine sewed, secured well enough to where the head wasn't a bobblehead. And so some time ago, I came up with making, this is um, batting, uh, I think I have a piece of it laying around here. I just used what I had, and I had some batting that looks like this. And this is probably three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, use what you have. I just took, cut a chunk off and rolled it up, and I don't even make this fancy. I think I've covered this under another video, but I just roll it up tight, secure it with some string thread, and uh, that's what goes in the uh, into the neck and uh, through the neck and into the head and into the body. Well, of course, to do that, um, I have to uh, make the head and uh, neck not closed off. So on the body, I stop about two rows uh, before the last two rows of knitting, and I start the head about two rows in. But I always make sure that I have the same amount of stitches left, live stitches left on the body that I start out with on the head so that I can just take those neck stitches, live stitches, and just start knitting the head. Well, that's worked terrific in her first book because all of her heads uh, were made that way. They just, they really continued on up from the neck. Well, I just made the assumption, so I'm telling a story on myself. I made the assumption that in her new book, the heads were the same way, even though I noticed that they were definitely a little more complicated heads, a little more depth to them than uh, the, her first book, just because of the character of the of the animals, I think. And so I thought, well, okay, I'm just going to start the head out like I normally do. And I'm knitting away and, you know, this head is not looking right. And I had to get almost half of the head done. And I'm studying this thing closely, thinking, how, how is this gonna, how's this coming together? And then I realized she actually starts her head here. She doesn't start her head out here, down here in the neck in her new book. And I think pretty much, uh, I haven't checked all the patterns, but I think most of the heads in her new book are that way. They, there might be an exception or two. But so she starts here. Well, think about this. I'm knitting this head now on this tiger, but I'm I'm starting it here. So the back of the head is down here. Well, the nose would have been sitting up here on, on top. It was so wrong. And so I, I really had to laugh at myself that I had not caught that, hadn't paid attention. And um, so... Of course, I had to rip it all out. And I will say, these heads that she has developed are quite uh, an engineering feat in my mind. I'm not a pattern writer, and I just can't imagine the, the development of getting these heads and all of the increases to come out 
correctly for the snout. Um, it, it really is pretty amazing. And so um, note, <laughs> take note, folks, if you are going to knit these heads and you want to knit them onto the body, uh, you, can, you can do it, but not in the way we've been doing it. So what did I do? I took it down, unraveled, all the way down to my live stitches where I left off on the neck and I left those on needles, set it aside. I started my head here and I, I knitted it exactly as the pattern calls for. But what I did and, and what she has is your seam. I don't know if we can see this. The seam would be from back here at the back of the head and straight through here to the underneath side of the muzzle. So in other words, the seam is running from front to back. And so I, I followed it all along, left, however, that, that much from the throat area to the back of the head, I left that part of the seam open. And then I came down here with needle and thread yarn and uh, sewed into each one of the live stitches. I did not do a Hirschner um, because actually you were sewing into the salvage edge of the head and picking up the live stitches that you had on the needle when you when you uh, finish the neck. Uh, and I that was like two rows from uh, the last about the last two rows of her pattern for the body. And so that worked really, really well. So you're securing your live stitches and um, it allowed me to get this into the neck and head. And so what I will say about our little stiffener here, I know people use other things and that's great. Use whatever works for you. Um, but I actually take some of my batting and I put a thin layer around this so the neck still feels, uh, it, there's give to it, but this is in the neck and you want it to go so it's about halfway up into the head and halfway down into the shoulders. And these heads, you know, you can still move this around, but it's not floppy. And so uh, that's my way for working with these new heads. And I will say, um, you know, if, if you've not made one of these critters before, um, if you're not a real experienced knitter, I definitely would suggest doing one of her earlier heads first. There's lots and lots of little detail stitches. Uh, and this is the tiger. I'm sure some of those other heads are even more detailed. Her instructions are very good. Uh, just follow it stitch by stitch and you will be fine. But if you've not made one of these critters before, um, I would suggest doing like uh, maybe the rabbit. Uh, don't do the horse to be your first one because that one too is a little more complicated if you don't have um, a real good understanding of some of the stitches that she's making. Um, I would just get one or two of those under your belt first. That's just my suggestion because, you know, you don't want to get discouraged right up front. But this is um, my little tiger that, our little white tiger, that will be actually Tuesday supposed to be flying out and going to Uganda. It's the team mascot. And I will post more pictures and uh, don't have the name yet. Uh, they're going to name her. And... Um, so I think that's pretty special that one of these little precious little, you know, <laughs> knitted animal friends that we're all doing, or many of us are, is uh, going to be at a big world class event. I think that's kind of fun. And I certainly feel pretty privileged that I got to make one and had no idea when I started making it that that's what was going to happen to her. But um there you go. That's our story. I wanted to show you the tail because uh, I had to change that up because in the pattern book, you know, the tail is white and some gray and yellow. And so I just, I did it 
just the two colors. And um, I think she's pretty cute. I wanted to show the front. I uh, always want to give Lois Crowweather uh, the uh, shout outs for these great patterns that we're all enjoying. Uh, I've told you last video, I think, that I have <laughs> taken my book completely apart and uh, it's the best way for me to use it. I'm very anxious for her to put it out uh, as a digital because I really like working uh, the patterns off of my phone. I sit my iPhone up. I could do it on my computer, but I actually like working off my iPhone. And I uh, sit it up real close to me and um, I can read the read the you know patterns real, real easy. Um, I think my, my next one that I'm gonna make, I think we're gonna do the monkey. I think, I think they're all terrific, but he just makes me giggle. When I see him and uh, that was uh, hard to make that decision I just have to say but I think he's gonna be my next my next adventure so for now that's uh, this is a short video um, if you have any questions some of you have been uh, great asking questions I hope I've answered them accurately and uh, I just have really enjoyed that interchange so please feel free to share this video um, and uh, hit like and subscribe if you haven't to my um, YouTube and uh, stay tuned I'm not sure what we'll be doing next but um, Maybe I'll finish up my bow stickening sweater. I like to get projects completed before I start too many others. And um, I still have a few buttons to sew on my chicken. I'm still working on that. So I want to get uh, a couple more projects done and then I can start new ones again. So anyhow, thanks for joining me. I hope you all are having as much fun as I am. And I'll keep you posted about our Miss Tiger. Bye now.